Hi, this is Kimberly Floyd of TakeBackYourTemple.com. For over 20 years, I suffered from compulsive overeating, but I was completely healed through the power of God. And through that process, I learned the truth of the following scripture, which says, For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with what is good. And that is in Psalm 107.9. A young woman who read about my weight loss success story emailed me recently with a shocking question. Does God care about your weight? I could hear the anxiety behind the question. She struggled with her weight and I imagine that she thought that God condemned her as much as she condemned herself. It was as much as I condemned myself back when I weighed 240 pounds and compassion filled my heart as I recall the person that I used to be. The answer that I gave her was one that God taught me through his word. No, God does not care about your weight. The Bible says that man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. God loves you much as much at a size 28 as at a size eight. And there is nothing that you can do that can make him love you more. In Genesis 1:27, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So think about this. Whenever you insult yourself, you are insulting the one whom God has created. King David says it best in Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Just as King David praised God for creating him, I praise God too. I also praise him for all the natural wonders that he created all around us and put here on this earth for us to enjoy. As Romans 1, 19 through 20 says, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are created, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. I consider the fact that I cannot create a speck of dust, never mind a rock, water, trees, flowers, birds, the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars, I cannot create the oceans. I cannot create a mountain even. I think that there is a reason why when we human beings are stressed out or overwhelmed or depressed or feeling helpless that we seek to retreat to the mountains or to the ocean or other places of natural beauty. Inside of the heart of every human being is the recognition that there is something that is higher than yourself. King David, and I just love the psalm, he wrote the majority of them, but he expresses this so well in this prayer to God in Psalm 61, 1 through 4. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you, for you have been a shelter to me a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Selah. And whenever you see that word Selah in Psalm, what it means is to pause and think about that. When your heart is overwhelmed, you too need a rock to go to. God says in Isaiah 44, 8, do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? 
Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. So praise God, because in Psalm 22.3, we are reminded that God is enthroned in the praises of his people. And whenever you praise God, then you are practicing his presence in your daily life. Secondly, I recommend that you build your house on the rock of God's word. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 7, 24, 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. The reason for my healing from compulsive overeating is that I learned that there is a rock that is higher than I, that I could retreat to. I learned during the process that I am not God. However, I also learned that I could come to know the one who is. I discovered the fruit of God's spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I discovered that I could change. I discovered that I could be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I gained confidence that for any reason I could call upon God. I discovered that I could go boldly to the throne of grace, that I could obtain mercy and find grace to help me in time of my need. I learned that God thinks about me. God thinks thoughts of peace towards me, not of evil, and he wants to give me a future and a hope. I discovered that God is love. I learned that God keeps me in perfect peace as my mind is stayed on him and as I trust in him. I learned all these things through my personal relationship with God through my faith in Jesus Christ. And if you want these benefits and want to learn how you too can have a personal relationship with God, then I urge you to visit the website that is shown at the end of this video. And also, if you want to learn how you too can overcome compulsive overeating God's way, then please visit www.takebackyourtemple.com and get my free special report, Overcome Emotional Eating God's Way. Thank you and God bless you.